Medina, and I am here covering the announcement that Bubba J is running for president of the infidel nation of the United States of America. Mr. Bubba J. Oh, cool. Fox News, where all the foxes work. <laughs> Excuse me. What? Ahmed, what are you doing? I am the legitimate news reporter and a political commentator, and I'm trying to get a job on Fox News. Fox News? Yes, and the only way to do this is if you're Bill O'Reilly or a hot chick. And I got nice hoochers. Next sense? Yeah, pretty much. Okay, here we go. So, Mother J, as a presidential candidate, which party do you represent? Uh, whichever party has a keg. Yeah. Oh, I remember the Libertarians. <laughs> Why did you decide to run for president? Well, from what I can see, you really don't have to do anything. <gasps> and they put you in free public housing. In the White House? Oh, I would like a black house too. Nothing wrong with a black house. In fact, some of my best houses have been black. You're an idiot. What I mean is, what promises would you make to the American people? As your president, I will lower the drinking age. Wait, scratch that. No drinking age! I had beer in the fifth grade, why can't you? Yeah, I was 18 in the fifth grade, but that doesn't matter! As a presidential candidate, you have to press the flesh. Oh, I wonder what the vice president has to do. Being an intern must suck. Are you not familiar with the term, to press the flesh? One time I sat on my own nuts, is that it? That's when my eye went crooked. How do you think you will do in the polls? Well, I'm not an expert on polls, but my cousin's a stripper who works on polls all the time, so I'm hoping she'll help me. <laughs> you have called women you don't like fat pigs and dogs. Does that sound to you like the temperament of a man we should elect as president? But I like fat pigs and dogs. That's better than a skinny pig and a dog is man's best friend. Okay, look, if you become president, you have to give speeches. Can you do that? Oh, <clears throat> I did not have sex with that woman. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> yep, yep, there you go. So if you're running for president, do you have any experience with debate? Sure, I use debate to catch the fish. <laughs> And then I can put up some chain link between the U.S. and Mexico and hire a Secretary of Defense. <laughs> I'm killing this great. Well, what do you think about the immigration reform? Is it okay for me to say that on this one I'm on the fence? For those immigrants that are already here, what will you do? I will let all Catholic Mexicans stay here. But if you're a Muslim Mexican, you're on your way back to Cuba! What will you do to repair racial relations in this country? As president, I will fight for folks of all races, especially NASCAR ones. Who would be in your cabinet? Oh, that's easy. Jack Daniels, Jose Cuervo, Captain Jack, and Bud that wiser guy. There is a lot of competition in this presidential race. What do you think about that rich candidate who says he's coming for you? There's another candidate? I love Bubba J. He's a terrific guy for a moron and a loser. <laughs> oh, sh. Bubba J is running for president. What would his America look like? Bubba J on gun control. If you're drunk and seeing double, shoot in the middle. Bubba J on illegal immigration. Is it bad for me to say I'm kinda on the fence on this one? He doesn't even know the words to the national anthem. Oh, say can you see? <laughs> Yankee Doodle. Free bird. 
What's wrong? Uh, I've forgotten the memorized words. I've forgotten the memorized words. Disgraceful. And some of his best friends are terrorists. And you will never find me! <laughs> hey, Ahmed, you want a beer? Beers with terrorists? And what about the aliens? I was kidnapped by an alien, and they probed me in my downstairs. That was the worst New Year's Eve ever. The Washington Times called him a dimwit and a dullard. The New York Times said he's the worst candidate in forever. Like literally forever, like before time began. Can a meteor just hit the earth already? Is this the sort of man we need in the White House? This is racist profiling. Here's my right profile. Here's my left profile. <laughs> and I'm a racist. Wait, what? He even plagiarized his speech at the National Convention. Four score and seven years ago, I have a dream. Had, I had a dream. What difference at this point, what difference does it make? Cause I'm as free as a bird now. On a steel horse I ride. I'm wanted, dead, or alive. I am the Eggman. I am the walrus, goo goo the Jew. And as we wind on down the road, there walks a lady we all know. And she is buying a stairway to heaven. I did not have sex with that woman, Miss Lewinsky. But I will not go quietly into the night. Today, we celebrate our Independence Day. Thank you. Good night, moon. Good night, moon. Good night, cow jumping over the moon. And God bless America. Tastes great, let's fill it. Bubba J singing the same old tune. 74 bottles of beer on the wall. Seven. Darn, it got to start over. 99 bottles of beer on the wall. 99 bottles of beer. Take one down. What a moron. What we need is a candidate that will stand up for families and build a wall of crackers at the southern border, even if no one actually knows what that means. I will build a great, great pile of crackers on our southern border and we'll make Mexico pay for those crackers. Mark my words. Mark his words. The Seattle Sun says he's probably better than the other one. Probably. The Birmingham Daily says, hell yes, we love crackers. Who will make America strong again? Who will make America suck less? I will. Stop sucking, America. Made for by Grump for President 2016. I'm Bubba J and I approve this message. That was great. Did I look fat? American infidels, I am Ahmedina. Welcome to part two of my coverage of election 2016. Last time we spoke with presidential hopeful and candidate Bubba J, who continues to campaign despite having zero chance of even being nominated following his drunk driving video of himself that he posted on social media. They say too much alcohol can mess up your memory <laughs> and um something else. Unbelievable. Here's a clip from a few months ago when he announced his candidacy. Why did you decide to run for president? Well, from what I can see, you really don't have to do anything. <gasps> and they put you in free public housing. In the White House? Oh, I would like a black house too. Nothing wrong with a black house. In fact, some of my best houses have been black. All I can say is, I looked fantastic. As for today, I'm here with the most outspoken and controversial presidential candidate of them all. Many complain he is politically incorrect and offensive, but the more offensive he gets, the better he does in the polls. Good evening, Ronald Grump. Hello, Aknadina. Ronald. Yes, that's not your real name, is it? Yes, it is. It's not even a real name. Yes, it is. Ronald Grump. 
Really? Akhmadina? Really? Is that your real name? I think you're actually Megan Kelly. Are you kidding? Her hair color is out of the bottle fake. And yours isn't. And yours isn't? It's not even my hair. <gasps> Me either. Oh. Huh. Well, this has been fun. We are not done yet. Calm down, man. Uh, lady? Uh, Skeletor? Whatever. Moving on. So, Ronald, this interview is your chance to say whatever you would like to America. Just peek into that camera. It's all yours. Where's my African-American? He's right there. Say what? Who's African-American? I'm Jamaican. Cracker. I love crackers. You know, some of my favorite crackers are crackers. When I become president, I will build a great cracker. And nobody builds better crackers than me, believe me. I will build a great, great pile of crackers on our southern border and will make Mexico pay for those crackers. Mark my words. Everything goes better on the Ritz. You know what we need to do in this country? We need to make America great again. And how do we do that? By making it suck less. So today, I'm announcing my new campaign slogan, Make America suck less. Not bad. Why, thank you. So, when you are president, will you grant me your first interview? <laughs> I'm sorry, no, I promised that to Bill O'Reilly. Oh, really? Is there nothing I can do to convince you? Huh? Hello? Hello? In the last few months, we have poked fun at Donald Trump. And in the comment section, many of you have asked why. Why? Why? Why don't we make fun of Hillary Clinton? Good question. If I had lips, I could go, shh. No, 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 no. I ain't saying nothing. I'm not afraid to say it. I am not afraid. I'm not afraid. I am terrified. What the hell? Hey, where'd all my emails go? I'll be voting for Trump. Uh, Hillary. <coughs> oh, still sick, huh? She not only deletes emails, she deletes... Ugh. The reason we don't make fun of Hillary Clinton is... Oh, thanks. It's not even my birthday. Oh, you. The freedom to vote. My fellow Americans, and all illegal immigrants too, you're not really Americans, but somehow you're voting, so shut up and listen carefully. This will only be in English. Lately, we have all heard folks saying, we have an important election coming up. My response to them is, really? Did you just say that? Does that mean all past elections were not important? You're a moron. Go back to your cat videos and your Candy Crush phone crap. We got this. And to the celebrities who are talking about this election, pull your head out of your self-indulgent butts. Contrary to what your kiss-ass agents are telling you, you are not smarter or more informed than everyone else. It's probably the opposite. And being famous does not mean we care what the F you think. Just shut up and act, or sing, or make your little dolls talk. Okay? Okay. No one cares what you think. Right. No one. Okay. Anyway, why am I here today? Because our great nation, the United States of America, with all the magnificence we have, with so many brilliant minds and intelligent folks throughout the land, have somehow nominated for president the two worst candidates imaginable. I am not kidding. I mean, really, what the f**k? 
You know I'm right. Deep down, we all know that these two are a serious joke. How did this happen? I don't know. It's like our country went panning for gold and ended up with two pieces of grape nut cereal in the bowl. Have you heard anyone say, we have two great candidates? No, this election is us, simply trying to figure out which candidate sucks less. Do you want the sour milk or the rotten tomato? Smash your finger or stub your toe? Live in Iraq or live in Iran? I don't know. I'll say this very concisely. This election is stupid. It's important and it's stupid. So as Americans, what do we do about it? Move to Canada? No, they love us as tourists, but they want us to stay up there about as much as you want your pervert uncle to stay in your kid's room. How do we make this better? I'll tell you one thing, you can't just sit back and watch what happens on November 8th because you don't like the candidates. That's an even bigger dumbass move than nominating these two chuckleheads. You have to get out and vote. And for whom do you vote? It's your call, America. If you don't want to vote either candidate in, then vote just to keep the other asshole out. It's your chance to make America suck less. So whatever you do, just effing vote. Thank you and gracias. See how I did that? Yeah, yeah, it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Donata. Greetings, infidels. It is me, Ahmed the Dead Terrorist, reporting for Foxy News. How Foxy News, you ask? Because they know that I am no longer a threat for any sexual misconduct. It is sad, but look at me. One explosion, it was instant junkyard, if you know what I'm saying. Today, for my interview, we have the author of the number one book in the country that the White House calls a garbage book by a garbage author. Please welcome Bubba J. Hi, Ahmed. Hey, if this is Foxy News, then why are you here? I addressed this question already. The only time you were hot is after the explosion and you're on fire. I kill you from here. But you still smell pretty. Oh, why, thank you. Like lavender with hints of gunpowder and screaming. It's my new cologne, TNT by Paco Rebom. Well, it's just lovely. Back to the reason you are here. Since losing the presidential election to Ronald Grump, you have become a best-selling author with your book, Fire and Furry. Furry? No, it's Fury. Furry. It's Fury. Furry. No, no, it's Fury. Show the cover of the book. Uh, oops. <laughs> oh, well, at least spelling and facts don't matter when you're writing an autobiography about the president. Oh, but I did have an uncle that was furry. He used to dress like a bear and poop in the woods. So that finally answers that question. Silence! Now, in your book, Fire and Furry, Inside Grump's White Horse, <laughs> what's so funny? It's supposed to say White House. Didn't you have an editor check for mistakes? Yeah, but it wasn't his fault. English ain't his first language. He's from one of those shithole countries. So you had a proofreader. Me and the guy read most of it, and we were drinking 80 proof. You're kidding, right? Half a bottle into it, and the book seemed perfect. It also says that this is an autobiography. Yep, I wrote it in my car, so autobiography. <laughs> Duh. We have heard that you are being accused of having a ghostwriter. A ghost? No, he was a real guy. You know how stupid you are. It's a gift. In the foreword, it says, and I quote, that you settled on a series of events which you believe to be true. That's journalism 101, my friend. Fact checking is for losers. That's a fact. I checked. Let's take a look at President Grump responding to your book. <sighs> All right, next question. Uh, what do you think about Bubba Jay's new book about you? Oh, my base will not read his book. Not only is it filled with lies, but it's not a tweet. 
My supporters want no more than 140 characters at a time, and this book has way more than that. How do you respond? My book is number one on the North Korea Times bestseller list. That Chinese dude with the Floby haircut loved it. What's that Floby? Google it, Ahmed. You weren't here when those things were huge. It was genius. Still got mine. Where did you get all your information? I did over 200 interviews. With? With people. No, I mean, who did you interview about Grump? Mainly folks that hate him. I hung around CNN and MSNBC. I went to Fox, but they just gave me a bunch of attaboys. In the book, you claim Grump's White House is a disorganized mess. Who told you that? I just had a feeling. A feeling? You know, from thinking about it, uh, like this. Uh... Oh, I got a fact. Time to write a book. I see. Let's hear from Grump again. This book is utter fiction, and it's loaded with spelling mistakes. Terrible spelling. And I know spelling. I have the best spelling. Also, the grammar is terrible. Terrible grammar. Oh, and it was written in crayon. I mean, I like crayons. My whole family likes crayons, but not these crayons. They are the worst crayons. How do you respond to that? He's just jealous because I have the box of 64 that has the sharpener in the back. That thing is awesome. But I never know if you're supposed to peel the paper off the crayon first or let the sharpener do the job. Oh, I hate my life. Your book states that President Grump is mentally unstable, but... Just the other day, there was a press conference with the White House doctor after the president's checkup. Let's take a look. So, in conclusion, President Grump undeniably passed both the health and mental screenings with flying colors. I'll take questions now. Oh, oh over here. Uh, so, are, you're saying that mentally he's unfit for office? No, uh, no, I'm saying that mentally he's perfectly fit. So, so he's crazy, right? No, I'll say it again. He shows no signs of any cognitive impairment. Over here. Right here in layman's terms, he's cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs? Can you hear the words coming out of my mouth? Is it true that at some point in his life, President Grump will die? Can someone please just shoot me in the head now? Now? Who's the lucky doctor that gets to examine the first lady? You pervert! Next question! I'd actually like to know the answer to that last question, too. Oh, good lord, I don't know. He's new around here. What's his name? Oh, yeah, Dr. Matt Lauer. Next question! So how did you reach your conclusion that he is unfit for office? Oh, he fits in the office. He's not that fat. Oh, you mean like he's wackadoodle. I just like seeing him mad. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> it, it makes him look nuts. Oh, can I say nuts on TV or just point to him? Hey! I'll show you, stable genius. It's time to put a stop to this attack on my character right now. President Grump, what are you doing? If this author doesn't stop promoting this garbage book, I'll be forced to use my much bigger button. <gasps> that is a big button. Well, what do you think? Can I push it? Now it's getting weird. Ooh. You touched my coffee!